Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. As a part of this tutorial, we are getting into the next two topics of this chapter as they are very small. We can talk together about them and the two topics are 1.2 Project Aspects Influenced by the Standards and 1.3, the six generic phases in the system lifecycle of a product. But yes, these are all specific to automobile industry. So let's understand a little more about the same. So the very first thing to start with is project aspects influenced by the standards. From the foundation, we have learned that how exactly the uh, standards play a vital role in our testing process. So in foundation, we understood the standards from the point of the documentation template, like creating a test plan, defect report, or test estimation, or test summary report. They do follow a quick standards like IEEE 829 in order to meet the expectations of the information, which should be mentioned as a part of documentation which really understands that when, when we fulfill all the necessary details which should be mentioned in a report, it not only helps you to have complete information about the activity which you're performing, but also helps your stakeholders to understand a lot more about what you exactly did as a part of testing. So here, as it comes to the products, or any specifically if you say safety critical devices, it is highly dependent on the standards because we need to make sure that everything is internationally met so that a user when uses such products has everything been through a standard so that we can comply in order to release the product into the market and an end user also finds it comfortable in order to use that. And safety critical involves human lives, so we cannot just play around and cannot have our inter way, internal way within the organization of doing it. So we should certainly take care of these standards which need to be met in order to deliver a product or definitely performing any kind of testing while developing that. So standards have an influence on the major aspects such as time, cost, quality, project and product risk. From the previous tutorial, we did understand that how exactly this uh, the pyramid and the triangle of the quality helps you to understand the same. But here we will be understanding a little more on the same thing. So standards increase the efficiency of the process, for example, to reduce the development time or cost at a stable quality, where you're not just given the freedom to do however you want and avoiding a lot of human mistakes or unnecessary data which could be required at any point of time or maybe missing the important information as a part of the development process. So standard will help you to reduce such things and increase the development and testing productivity, including the time and cost. So for example, uniform naming, like naming conventions throughout the organization and the project, better transparency, earlier collaboration or easier collaboration, increased reusability, because it has a standard, then reusability becomes quite simple and easy. Consolidated experiences, for example, the best experiences which you generally have done as a part of best practice, which can be followed internally within the automotive industries. With well-established technology guidelines, they help to discover risk and defects early to resolve them. Standards are the basis for audits. Therefore, an auditor can assess the quality of the product or process. At the same time, the author can check if they meet the requirements or not. So when you have a template, it becomes quite easy that I just have to check this. And if it is not as per that, I cannot approve this to do further. So standard not only plays a vital role in terms of making a good product but also makes it quite auditable. Standards are part of the contractual or regulatory provisions and guidelines because here the standards are the important thing to be dealt with. Not only that, let us give you a quick introduction that what that uh, what are the standards which we'll be covering as a part of the series of tutorials. We will be having few standards which will be covered as per the automotive industries. So yes, the syllabus includes standards such as ISO 26262 or also known as Automotive SPICE or generally called as A-SPICE, which standardize or which generally means uh, it is a standard which provides the framework for defining, implementing and evaluating the process required for system development focused on software and system parts in the automotive industry, which is generally about the standardizations of the process and the methods which you make use of. Just like 
Uh, the general process includes CMMI, TMMI, STEP, CTP, NEXT, and all those things. Same way here, we have the ASPI standards for the process and methods, which generally stands for Automotive Software Performance Improvement and Capability Determination, where E is taken from the determination in between to make a good abbreviation. The second standard which we'll be covering is AutoSAR, which AutoSAR stands for Automotive Open Soft System uh, Architecture, which is a global development partnership or of automotive interested parties founded in 2003. It pursues the objective to create and establish an open and standardized software architecture for automotive electronic control units. So it's more of the standards which are driven towards the products. So both the ways, one is the process and the method, and the second one is the product itself. Additionally, as a part of this, the six generic phases of the system life cycle. So here we are trying to understand. We do have something called a software development life cycle, which we learned from the foundation. But yes, when it comes to product, we generally know this as product life cycle, the PLC. But here, when it comes to the automotive specific to a particular product which has a safety critical devices or you deal with automobile industry, you have a different system life cycle. But the same thing can be understood with relation to what other activities we generally do in the other projects other than the project-based organizations. So yes, obviously the system life cycle of a car or all included components begin with the product idea and ends with the decommissioning. Throughout this life cycle development process, business process, logistic process, and process regarding the production technology are involved. Milestones with previously defined entry and exit criteria help to achieve mature process. These separate and synchronize the system, the life cycle into the following six phases. So as per the automobile, we have just a different naming conventions, but activities are also summarized according to that. For example, concept in automobile industry is called as test planning or we just put it as concept instead of test planning. The development phase includes the test analysis, design, implementation, execution, evaluation of the exit criteria and reporting, which is completely a development phase. Production is the end of end line, end of line test that any kind of test, whatever you have to do, you have to finish that here. And the next thing comes is utilization. That means no test activities, you deploy the activities and see that how exactly it works. Once it is basically released, you have definitely a maintenance phase, which is called as the support and retirement. If you think that this cannot be further used or probably moving into the next platform or moving to another device of the same. So that's the general life cycle of a project where or product in automotive industry. The automotive industry is very popular product development process which generally uses three terminologies in fact so a lot of organization instead of having six phases they can further summarize it to the three phases called as conception development and production so it's just the standard the other things happens obviously as a part of release maintenance and retirement which could which could be a continuous process for a time long so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Just stay tuned for upcoming tutorials. We will be learning a lot about automotive industry as a part of this tutorial series. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.